My brother's wife lost her job. Which has caused them to lose the house they were renting. My brother asked if he could stay with me. I talked to my boyfriend and he said sure. So, I told my brother, yes, but he can't bring any of their furniture with them. We don't have any room for any of it. Our spare room has a bed and dressers in it already. He'll have to find a place to store their things. He wasn't happy about it, but said okay and that was that. When they started moving their clothes and wetting it in, they started complaining about how small the room was. I ignored it because they were used to a rather large house. And I was sympathetic because I know how it feels to go from having everything to nothing. I apologized and told them that this was the best we had. Issue. My son was in his room and started crying. I went in there to check on him and my brother got mad. I usually keep his door closed when he's napping, I have a baby monitor, and I guess my brother saw how large his room is. It's not big, at all. By any means. It's just bigger than the spare room. He asked why the hell we gave him the small room when we can just move our son into the spare room. I told him I'm not moving my son and all his things into a different room, when the spare bedroom is perfectly fine for the two of them, as long as they don't try to move their entire house into one room. He got mad. She got mad. They threw a fit. Then my brother asked why we don't move my son into our room. I told him that my son's crib won't fit in our room. And again, I'm not moving him just to accommodate them. The last week or so has been very tense. Small comments here. Cold shoulder there. Petty shoulder checks from his wife if we cross close together. I've kept my mouth shut because I love my brother and I don't want to cause trouble. Plus, if they weren't so pissy, I guess is the word, they wouldn't be hard to live with. They've started to complain that my son's crying at night is keeping them awake. Which, I get, but he's a baby. He only wakes once a night to eat. And that's not even all the time. This morning it all came to a head when my brother told me I should move into the spare room and let them have mine and my boyfriend's room so that they don't get woke up by the baby. When I told him no, he started yelling calling me selfish and entitled. Told me that I should let them have my room because my son is an annoying little crap that keeps them up every night, all night. Where I may be an idiot. I saw Ed. Let me start this by saying I did not yell at my brother as he yelled at me. I said, if you can't appreciate the room you were given, you can go elsewhere. My boyfriend and I have been more than accommodating to you. You constantly complain. You're ungrateful and rude. Get over yourself, or get out of my house. Not the idiot, not only are you helping them, but they have the nerve to be ungrateful and think you should basically rearrange your home for them. Between the shoulder checks, the attitude, and then finally demanding your room. You have nothing to consider yourself ta in the situation. They have decided they should be entitled to upset your home, that open to them, so they wouldn't be on the street, and that's how they decide to repay you. They want to play a stupid game, show them their prize of getting kicked to the curb and figuring out what to do. You are so not the idiot, but your brother and sister-in-law sure are. You have been far more patient than I would have been. What efforts have they made to find jobs? If they can't get jobs in order to get back on their feet who knows how long you might be stuck with them. If sister-in-law is not working, what the heck is she doing all day since you do the cooking and cleaning? For all of your relatives that are hounding on you to cave into their entitled demands, let one of them take them in. You and your boyfriend have been very accommodating and all they give you is grief. Time to kick them to the curb. Not the idiot. I can't imagine the audacity. If someone let me stay in their walk-in closet under those circumstances I would be freaking thankful. I get that it's probably been an adjustment to living in much more cramped quarters and with a baby, but holy crap. There's a difference between being frustrated with life and being entitled and demanding of the people allowing you to stay with them for free. Sounds like he needed a reality check. I'm 28. During the great year of 2020, my sister, 25, lost her job and lost her apartment. It screws all around, she loved her job and the area she was in, but she was the newest employee on a department that was the most likely to be downsized. She asked to move in with me. I live in the next major city near her and gave her an opportunity. I have a three-year-old daughter and around the time she had been laid off, my babysitter had to quit because of 2020 reasons. I live in a three-bedroom house in the outskirts of town, so I offered that she gets her own room, bills paid, and groceries if she watches my daughter while at work until she finds a job, gets her job back. 
I didn't ask her to cook or clean. I prefer to cook, and I'll prefer to clean myself, so I know that it got done. At the time she agreed. I prepare my daughter's meals in the morning and meds every day, so my sister's job is to make sure that when I get home my daughter is still alive. It's been two months and they seem to have really bonded well, but she confronts me last night demanding she be paid $25 an hour every time she has to babysit. Her last job was $15 an hour, and she watched my daughter for about 8 hours a day 4 or 5 days a week. Her current bills, including car payments, student loan payments, and cell phone bill, and credit card payments, the cost of the room, any activity that she takes my daughter on, pandemic permitting, and groceries add up to more than what she made in the past. I told her that I couldn't afford to house her, feed her, pay her bills, and also a sizable stipend. I might be able to do like a stipend per two weeks, maybe 200 a week for personal things. She told me she wouldn't watch my daughter any longer. I told her if she doesn't, then I would be making her move out, following all legal proceedings, and wouldn't pay her bills any longer. I have a backup babysitter who I would pay what they quoted me, but they wouldn't be living with me. They would have a living wage for the area, $20 an hour, plus additional compensation for activities that they take my daughter on. My sister started crying and left the room. Am I the idiot? I feel horrible, I hate confrontation and being mean. Thank you for your judgments and advice. I'm sorry, what now? She wants free housing, all her bills paid, her food paid for whilst also having a personal chef and cleaner, and now also wants a wage of around $800 or $1,002 for looking after her own niece. How about you offer to pay her the normal rate you would pay your ordinary babysitter, and in return you then charge her the going rate for her room and utilities, and make her pay her own groceries and bills. You're not the idiot. Not the idiot, she made the agreement, so she knew the terms. But, maybe you negotiate the terms. You pay the $20 you were going to have to spend if she leaves, for X hours a day. But, she pays for room, her own bills, and own food. Or you work out the rate, so that it basically comes out to what you're paying now with the $100 per week. Maybe this is a self-esteem issue for her, and a business like an arrangement will help her. But make sure that it's spelled out so that if she takes the child to the park on the weekend and you think she's doing it as the aunt, you don't find yourself charged for babysitting. This is the kind of situation that's screwed, because OP isn't in the wrong, but I understand where her sister is coming from. If OP is paying her bills and providing housing, rather than paying her a wage, then she's not earning money. She has no way to save, because she's not earning a wage, she's earning a living space. OP, what if instead of paying her bills for her, you worked out an hourly wage that worked for both of you? Because having someone pay for your needs and having someone pay you directly are two very different things. I, 31, have a 26-year-old sister who recently got divorced. It's been a difficult phase for her. She's also been having issues with my mom and came to stay with me and my husband for a while. She doesn't talk much about the divorce she just says her ex-husband suddenly wanted a divorce for no reason. Which I find a little hard to believe to be honest here. I love my sister, but her ex-husband has always been polite, quiet, and treated us well. Once she's moved in with us, she started doing strange things. For example. My husband told me he found her a couple of times in our bedroom, and she said she was cleaning, even though she doesn't normally help around the house or anything. Also, she claims my husband walked in on her twice without knocking, but my husband never uses the guest bathroom, so I found that strange. She'd use my products but doesn't return them to me. I ended up buying new stuff. She also banned my husband from going upstairs because of the way she dresses. I told her how uncomfortable that made him feel since he said he felt like he was walking on eggshells in his own house, but she said he was being controlled and needed to loosen up. But that not only annoyed my husband but me as well. I told her to be more respectful with her clothing since they were inappropriate to walk around with. I even gave her some of my pajamas but still wears the same stuff. What really caused the issue was when she decided to use our bathroom next to our bedroom to take a shower. My husband was working in the backyard then, when he walked into his bedroom he found my sister there. She started yelling at him, and he said he didn't know she was there, and had to leave immediately. I came out of the kitchen, and my husband told me what happened. 
She then showed up and was lashing out, saying she already let us know that she'd use our bathroom because there was no hot water in the guest bathroom and that my husband couldn't respect her privacy for 10 minutes. He argued with her and told her that he didn't know. He left and I started telling her what she did was wrong and that I was 100% sure she didn't tell us she was going to use our space. She got defensive and blamed my husband telling me to divorce him like she did her ex and that I deserved better. I got mad at her and told her to apologize to him. She took it as if I was siding against her and told me to choose a side or she won't talk to me. I had enough I told her to leave the house. I couldn't handle her attitude. She went to my mom's house and my mom suddenly started berating me for kicking her out and letting my husband drive a wedge between us. I told her I seen her behavior, but she excused her saying she just went through a divorce, give her a break, apologize and come pick her up. But I refused to do that. Not the idiot. Your sister is trying to destroy your marriage because her marriage was destroyed. I don't know clinical term for this, but let's go with scrutinous. Expect a claim from your sister that your husband was spying on her, purposefully or accidentally rubbed up against her, or outright tried to make love with her, and she rebuffed him. Protect your house. Your husband is part of your house. Though your sister is family, she is not part of your house. Not the idiot. Your sister's husband divorced her for no reason, she left your mother's house and now she has caused enough problems in your house that both you and your husband are uncomfortable. So she is back at mom's and mom wants you to make exceptions for her awful behavior because she is having a hard time. The common denominator here is your sister. She has some issues that she needs to address. You should not let her move back in. She is 26. If she is going to alienate everyone in her life, then she is going to have to grow up and deal with life on her own. Not the idiot. You and your husband have a right to feel comfortable in your own home. You are also not the only person in the family who needs to be responsible for your sister. She should stay with your mom until she can agree to new terms and rules if you still want to help her. Rules should include going to therapy, strict boundaries in the house, and an apology. Have you tried to reach out to ex-husband to get his side of the story? Might help she some light about what's going on that still allow you to help her. And also nice to check in to see how he is doing since he was part of the family. I, 26, been with my fiancé, 30, for three years. I moved with him nine hours away from my hometown after we got engaged. He works full-time and is only free on weekends and holidays. My uncle had been sick with cancer for over a year. He was in his late 40s. This was hard on me because my relationship with my uncle was very strong. I grew up with him because of my dad's absence. So he was like a father to me. My mom called me to tell me that he passed away and I just broke down and started crying. My fiancé got back and asked me what happened and I told him my uncle passed away. He calmed me down and gave me some water. Then he called my family to extend his condolences. In the evening I told him we were going to go stay with my family for a few days till the funeral is over. He looked at me confused saying he didn't think we were going. Thought we'd send the family a letter or an email to extend our condolences and apologize because he already took a few days off work to go spend a few days at his parents' house. I was stunned when he said this. Even though I explained that my uncle was like a father to me. I told him I needed to be there for my family and what they'll think of me if I don't come. But he told me that my whole family will be there so no one will even notice if we showed up or not. He talked about making plans with his family and how all that will be earned. I told him I could call them and explain if he can't, but he lashed out at me that I'm being overly emotional right then and that he didn't know my uncle that well and wasn't willing to drive for long hours and let work pile up to go be at a funeral. We argued very loud and I ended up packing everything and leaving by myself. My family asked me why my fiancé didn't come and I couldn't tell them why I told them we had a fight and it turned out he sent my mother an email extending his condolences and making excuses for not showing up with me. It's been two weeks and I'm still with my family. He is calling me wanting me to come back and for things to go back to normal. He even tried to get my family to convince me to forgive him after this. Not the idiot. I speak from personal experience that this is a gigantic red flag. Seriously, you need to sit down and really reconsider this relationship. When my grandmother died after a long battle with cancer my ex's response was about time. 
I never really forgave them for it in my heart, but still continue to try and make things work. Well, apparently that was my I'm a doormat signal because he just kept getting more and more verbally abusive after that. Someone who won't emotionally support you when a close loved one dies is someone who won't emotionally support your period. Not the idiot. I've been with my spouse for 12 years now, but about 18 months into the relationship, my mom died after a short bout with cancer. I never had to ask him to be there for me. He knew my mom but had only really interacted with her a handful of times. He was there and held me up through the whole ordeal without prompting. We've weathered other traumatic events since then, and there's never been a question about whether the other person would offer their full support. If the person I'm supposed to marry can't even offer me support when someone close to me dies, then that means I can't count on you. I've always heard you should not marry someone until you've experienced a few things with them. A rough financial patch or death of a loved one. I was always told that these things bring out the worst in people, if you can love them at their worst then you know you can love them forever. He has not loved you at your worst. He made it about him. This is your future. If I were you, I would not marry him and would reconsider marrying this boy. He is a boy. If he were a man he would be by your side to emotionally support you during this time. He sounds controlling red flag your whole family will be there no one will notice if we are not. My husband's brother, my brother-in-law, and his two kids, 13 and 8, were staying with us for Christmas. They've had a rough year because his wife died in March. The kids are a handful because of it, but I've been trying to be gracious. Yesterday was my last straw and I need a gut check for if I overreacted. I got home from work yesterday and discovered the ground floor toilet is cracked and leaking water. It's a mess and after shutting off the water, I ran upstairs to get extra towels and discovered the upstairs toilet is cracked and leaking too. At this point I'm pissed. I go to the basement and, yup, the basement toilet is even worse. I ran into the kids on my way up with extra towels and asked what the hell they did to the toilets. The oldest said, maybe it was the boiling water bandits. I said that makes no sense and we get into an argument. Brother-in-law came along to ask what was wrong. He was taking a nap. The kids start saying the boiling water bandits did it. As we're arguing, it comes out the kids were trying to do a prank because of Home Alone. They dumped boiling water in all the toilets and tried to blame it on burglars who go around breaking toilets. At this point, I'm saying that's ridiculous and they're old enough to know the difference between a stupid movie and real life. Brother-in-law gets upset at this because the kids have imprinted on Home Alone because it's about a mother and her kid being reunited at Christmas. At this point, both kids start crying about missing their mom. I told them they need to leave because I need to fix my house. Brother-in-law says you're throwing us out. I explained there's no functioning toilets in the house and if anything they threw me out of my own home because I'm going to have to stay in a hotel. My husband is not speaking with me because the kid's feelings are upset. He's staying with brother-in-law and I'm at a hotel alone while trying to find a plumber who can fix all of this. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Where were the kid's father and uncle while they were boiling and toting around enough water to crack and destroy three toilets? Where were they when the kids were watching so much Home Alone that they decided to model their behavior on an ancient movie? Grieving and bored destruction are two entirely different things. The boys and their dad need professional help and you need plumbers and an investigation of any other water damage that happened from the leaking. It doesn't take long. Homeowners insurance might cover it, depending on the policy, but your rates could go way up. Everyone's the idiot here. The kids were idiots, the brother-in-law was a bigger idiot for not watching his kids, but the horrid things you said about their mother never coming back makes you the biggest idiot. I don't care how upset you were, these kids lost their parents and you threw that in their face because you were upset. You don't do that to kids, that was cruel. You need to walk yourself to therapy, that was not acceptable, and I don't blame your husband for being upset. Not the idiot, they're old enough to know what they're doing. Their father is done more harm than good by not giving and limits. Yes, it's hard that their mother is gone, but if he let them do whatever they want they're gonna destroy the whole house. Who don't they destroy his toilet and he'll see how he like it. As for your husband he's honestly the worst in all for that for siding with them, leaving you alone and letting you deal with all the mess with plumber and assurance. 